Hi, today on the Doctors Who Read Stuff, we are discussing the Vulcan Academy Murders by Jean Laura. Stay tuned. Okay, so in the last review, uh, we talked about the Edic Epidemic, and I mentioned that it was actually the sequel to another book by Jean Laura called The Vulcan Academy Murders. So I thought, since I referenced it quite a bit, uh, it might be a good idea to uh, actually talk about the first book in this series. So in this one, uh, we are introduced to some of those characters that are so prominent in the following book. Um, but the book starts out with a battle with the Klingons and one of the Enterprise crew members becoming very gravely injured. Now Spock says, hey, there's an experimental technique on Vulcan that uh, might be able to help. And McCoy is like, well, well, hold on. How can there be an experimental technique that I don't know about? Because I read all the medical journals. I know what's going on. And... Spock divulges that he knows about it because his mother is currently undergoing the treatment and she's only the second person to ever have it done. So uh, they proceed to Vulcan. They get their uh, crew member hooked up um, and then things start to go wrong. So um, what I like about this book is that it deals a great deal with Vulcan the race, the planet, the culture, the society, uh, rituals, you know, we get, we get everything. And I don't know how close this is to canon. I don't know how much of this stuff is, stuff was actually vetted or if like a lot of these novels that came out during this time period, it's just like artists or authors imagining what these things are like. But this is well documented. It's well thought out. The cultural differences that Vulcan has are definitely highlighted and brought to center. And it would not be a novel entitled The Vulcan Academy Murders without murder occurring. Now, the front of the book says, Captain Kirk becomes an interplanetary homicide detective. I don't know if this is going to zoom in. On, uh, no, you can't see it. But believe me, it says it right there. It's on the book. And I'm kind of amused by that. Um, for the record, this fit me a lot better the last time I wore it. Um, but what, what always amuses me about these books is the fact that they put a little tagline at the top. Captain Kirk does this. The Enterprise does that. Mr. Spock juggles, I don't know, whatever, whatever. I, my brain is not firing on all cylinders. I can't come up with a witty example, but uh, this was in, this came out in originally in 1984, kind of the heyday of these serial novels. And uh, the, in, the entire book, cover to cover, works really well um there are some things that are a little cringy you know like like kirk noticing all the women and like how this one woman he encounters how it makes him feel you know th there's stuff like that but but what is very hard or what, what's very rare to see in some of these books is you know dialogue that you could really see the, the character saying in that or the, the actor saying as that character like you know you read a line and you're like oh yeah that sounds like Spock or that sounds like McCoy Jean uh, Laura captures that the dialogue is on point it is consistent with the characterization that the actors have portrayed up till this point um, so where it, where it falls a little flat is where, you know, uh, 
there are three people in this treatment by the time the Enterprise gets there. And two of them die, leaving only Amanda, uh, Spock's mother. And so, like, Kirk is convinced there's murder, but the Vulcans are like, no, there's been no murder on Vulcan for thousands of years, until finally they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody's murdering. But it's on the Vulcan Science Academy where there are lots of non-Vulcans. So they're like, oh, hey, it could be a non-Vulcan. Maybe we're cool. Um, there is one character. His name is Sendet. Sendat, I think. Who looks like he is, like, a prime suspect. And so he undergoes this ritual where these healers and Tapa like peel back the layers of his mind to see if he's lying about something um, and that and it's like if he's found guilty he has the choice of I think death or like, like peaceful death not like firing squad but death or rehabilitation or like exile off the planet or something like that um and that was that was like, yeah. do I do I buy that the Vulcan society is as advanced as it is? Would be like, you committed a crime, being killed is one of the options you have. And then I think of Ponfar, and I'm like, okay, maybe that's maybe that's not such a stretch. Um, anyway, Sendat was mentioned, was. Uh, featured in the edict epidemic as well and i mentioned him last time but this is where you're really introduced to him this is where you're introduced to dr corrigan and the healer sorel his daughter tamir you know, some of those characters that were fleshed out very well in the edict epidemic uh, were featured prominently uh, this is where you first learn about them this is where you start to take a shining to them. You start to understand them. You start to enjoy them. You want to know what's going on in their head and in their lives. And that's why I think it's important that this book be read before the edict epidemic. Now, certainly, since this is a serial novel from the 80s, we know, we know before we pick this up that the Enterprise prevails. Kirk comes out on top. The mystery is solved. The galaxy is saved. Everything is fine. It's just how we get there that's a little interesting. And I was, you know, I, I read this book probably 25 or 30 years ago. It was one of my favorites. I probably have read this book five or six times. Uh, not in the last 20 years, but I've it, it has been read a lot. And... I just, I like the way the story unfolds. I mentioned a, a part fell flat for me, and that was where Kirk takes on, according to the cover, the role of the interplanetary homicide detective. You know, he's convinced that there's a murderer on Vulcan. The Vulcans don't have police to deal with it, so he takes it upon himself to go around and question people who might have a motive, and it's a little ham-fisted. Uh, I'm not going to lie. But it's such a small part of the book that I don't think it detracts from the overall enjoyment. So, in closing, this is a great book because you learn a lot about Vulcan society. This is a great book because you get to see a lot of the Sarek-Spock relationship, you know, uh, Sarek being deeply sorry about how he's treated his son in the past and wants to make amends but from his perspective he sees Spock as putting up barriers and not opening up and not wanting to really go down that avenue and I guess if you are Spock do you I mean would you really blame him for that I mean he's kind of gotten the shaft from his dad for most of his life and so you would expect there to be some lasting repercussions of that behavior and of that handling, I guess. So it's interesting to see that dynamic explored. And I think, again, it, the book does it well. So in closing, this is a great book. This is a fun read. If you come across this somewhere, I suggest you give it a shot. Uh, 
it's probably not that expensive. You know, I think the price tag on the back of mine was $2.25. And I, I repurchased this within the last two years because I saw it somewhere and I was like, oh man, I remember this book. I want this book in my collection again. So here it is. Now, if you enjoyed this, I really hope you'll sound off in the comments. I really hope you'll hit the like button. If you really like it, I would love for you to subscribe. That would be great because we're going to be going through and we're going to be doing more of these short reviews. I'm going to be hitting a lot of Star Trek. Chip is going to be hitting some Star Wars and some other books as well. So we hope you'll stick around for that. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you next time. Have a good night.